What's poppin' family? It's your boy Curse, and we back with another Spiritual Decode. Today we're gonna be talking about Equals Pi by John Michael Basquiat. This is a special piece that was created around 1982 during Basquiat's coveted era, and it primarily resided within private collections up until it was recently purchased by the Tiffany's Company to be utilized in a ad campaign called About Love in partnership with Jay-Z and Beyonce. And so independent of the art piece, the marketing side, the marketing campaign has a few prominent or notable features. And one of the most prominent things that stood out is that Beyonce is seen in the photos wearing the Tiffany heirloom, which is a 128.54 carat yellow diamond necklace that only three other women have ever worn. And so this is a special moment because not only is she the fourth woman to ever wear this, she is the first black woman to ever wear this. And so that in itself is significant and has some significance. However, when we speak about the actual art piece, aside from the marketing now, this art piece is very intricate, very complex, and even today I'm only going to scratch the surface with some of the possibilities in terms of meaning and what the artist was trying to convey message-wise. This is what I was able to interpret. And so when we first jump straight into it, immediately to the uninitiated eye, this piece can seem chaotic. And the reason being is because there's a lot of different elements going on. There's a lot of different pieces. And when we understand the three primary methods that the subconscious mind is programmed via trauma, repetition, or symbols, then we can clearly see this piece has pretty much a little bit of all three elements. So when we speak to the cone, knowledge of the cone, that is essentially top of the painting and one of the most prominent statements. And so knowledge of the cone, the cone has many implications, many applications, However, the most common application of cones is our vision, our eyes. And so cones give you the ability to see colored objects. Cones turn light into color. Perception of color by the brain requires input from at least two out of the three different types of cones that we as humans possess. So we must possess two out of the three in order to see or rather to perceive color. And if you look at the two thirds, right? We do have a two thirds fraction on the painting as well. However, if you convert this two thirds over to a decimal, you get 0.6666. Now, six has often been associated with the number of the devil, the mark of the beast, all these things that have generally been a misdirection at best. Now, when we talk about the vibration of six from a numerology or gematria standpoint, the number six carries the vibration of man, of essentially earth. And it's a, it's a grounded type of energy. And so when we understand everything in this universe, the key to being able to experience is moderation. And when there is not a level of moderation, when you are taking too much grounded energy, that's when you can get into that 666 energy and essentially need to reharmonize, restructure your internal world, your internal reality, so that you are in harmony. Because it's too much of an energy and too much of anything is a bad thing. So 
when we talk about the actual meaning of 6666, we're talking about the reconciliation of all things, both in heaven and earth. So we're talking about the conjoining of two realms and realities. We're talking about man and his home, our earth. And we have to understand that earth and man were created in perfection. Everything you see is by design. We are programmed to operate in this reality by design because human behavior is highly predictable. When you understand human behavior, human psychology, you are able to manipulate human behavior and human psychology in order to enact or rather to force inspired action by people who may not even understand that this type of witchcraft is being practiced upon them. And so when I speak to witchcraft, what I mean is anything, any process that is occurring without one party knowing of what is truly occurring. So if somebody is practicing witchcraft on you, if they are trying to put you under a spell, they are trying to get you to believe their perspective. If they say there's a six, you see a nine, you would have to put yourself into their space and reality because otherwise you'll never see that nine from your perspective. It will, or rather the six, it will remain a nine. It takes going to the other side to gain perspective. And when you have perspective, you can make an educated decision. If you don't have perspective, you can't make an educated decision because you lack the information. And when humans lack information, when we don't know a certain word, we try and just get the gist of the meaning. We try and get as much as we can and leave the bits we don't understand. However, the problem with that is that the devil is in the details and that one word can change an entire meaning of a statement. And if you are not aware of this, again, this is how witchcraft can be practiced upon you and these spells can be put upon you and you can be tricked into believing different realms and realities, different ideologies that are not in your best interest or not aligned with your divine purpose. So moving forward, we have volume of a cylinder equals pi times the radius squared times the height divided by three. Again, this has to do with cones. We are talking about cones a lot in this image. And the reason we are talking about cones is because we are talking about light and we're talking about the perception of light. However, light is information. So if you understand that light is information, when you are in the dark about something, you don't have the information. When you have the information, you have a level of awareness. When a light switch flips on, you can now position yourself in the room and understand your position relative to everything around you. However, if you are in the dark, there's no way to essentially create a accurate position relative to the things around you because you don't have the information. And information is power. Now, we live in an age of information where everything is at your fingertips. However, it is about discernment at this point. Because yes, there is an amplitude of information. However, you can spend a copious amount of time looking through the wrong things that are not really valuable, that are essentially just misdirections to keep you in different loops, different feedback loops, because that is the nature of this reality. We are machines that run on code. Our code is our belief system. Where do we get our belief system? That's what we're conditioned. We come into this world with a preconditioned belief that has been already packaged, bundled up, and given to us by our, our environment. Now, once we 
gain the ability to become aware of the fact that we can change the code, we can change our code, we can change our behavior, that is when we become the developer, the devil. However, in order to be the devil, you have to have information. Lucifer was essentially kicked out of heaven for seeking information. And this is just that energy of the archetype. When you are seeking out information for your own gain or some gain of self-interest, what happens is you tap into Luciferian energy. And again, it's okay to tap into things in moderation. When you go too much into that energy is when you get lost into the materialism and the whole chase. And that's when you fall into the box. Now the box, when they say think outside the box, the box is representative of the cross. Now the cross is essentially six boxes conjoined. Now, if you were to take six different squares and stack them up, you're going to make a cross. Now, if you were to fold that up on those dotted lines, you will make a box containing, all, an all-containing box. And the reason that is, is because the archetype of Jesus was a demonstration that if you follow this archetype's backstory, if you follow this story, this is what is going to happen. Essentially, you're going to be persecuted by someone close to you, someone you love, and it is going to be a process where you are going to have to die for your cause, die on your cross, die for your cause, cause, cross, cross, cross. So if you're dying for a cause, you better be damn sure it's a cause that you actually choose or rather chose. And it was not something chosen for you. If you are dying for a cause that was chosen for you and you have no business being in, that is foolish. And it is foolish because you have to be aware of where your energy is being siphoned and manipulated. You are a battery pack within this realm and reality. You have the potential to power other individuals' dreams at the expense of your energy. I don't know about you, but at the end of the day, I get tired and I have to rest. Therefore, one could logically say, I don't have an unlimited amount of energy. Somebody or something is regulating my energy and each day that I happen to wake up, I get a resupply, a resourcing, and once that is depleted, that is depleted and must be replenished in some way, shape, or form. Now, when we talk about the depletion of one's resources, again, this has to do with perspective. This has to do with mind state. If you're in a lack mentality because you've been program to think and default in a lack mentality, you're not going to be able to imagine and see the combinations and the possibilities. So when you can't see the possibilities, you have no hope because hope only comes when something is possible. If you believe something is impossible, there's no hope. But if there's the slightest, slightest chance that it could possibly be true, there is hope present. Why? Because possibility is present. So when you understand possibility and hope must be present together, this is why the possibilities are stripped away from you on a day-to-day -day basis. Why everything around you is a constant reminder of your positioning versus somebody else's because comparison is the thief of all joy. When you compare something, you instantly lose the joy behind it. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter what you've accomplished. The second you try and compare your accomplishment, what you've overcome, any of that to somebody else, you're going to feel minimalized. You're going to feel 
minimized. And the reason for this is because, again, you have to understand you are everything and nothing all at once, all encompassing. There's no such thing as time because we create that. It's a figment of our imagination. It's a shared construct that we have taken distance. We looked at the sun's position and said, okay, it was here. Now it was here. We have taken distance. It moved. Therefore, time has passed. However, it is just a belief. And the problem is that we allow this belief to become something that we think is tangible. Therefore, we allow it to rule over us. And we have become slaves to time. And because we have become slaves to time, we have the assumption that certain things are going to happen according to our time. However, our time doesn't exist. It's a unit of measurement and it's purely subjective. So if our time is purely subjective, how can one ensure that they are placing it in the best possible position. If each of your moments is a time bomb, where are you planning your time bombs? Is it in the future? So that when that time bomb goes off, you have some type of event that triggers the next level of evolution? Or are you placing all your time bombs in the past so that you're constantly traveling back to the past and reliving these events that you've already lived through. To me, I akin the difference to financing the pain versus owning it. You could just own the motherfucker outright, pay the upfront cost, and it's yours. You drive it off the lot, it's yours. Or you can finance it over 72 months, you got interest, you got all these other fees, all these other things associated with it, but you got a small monthly payment. So you only pay a small monthly amount of pain, but it's split out over such a long period that it's agonizing, it's demoralizing. It makes you not want to live the life you're living because it is the small pebble in your shoe that makes it difficult to continue putting your best foot forward. So, hopping back on to the cross aspect, we got three crosses here. Now, these three crosses on this painting can be symbolic of Jesus and the two thieves. Now, when we think about the two thieves, these three men, technically, are representations of the world. And so the first thief is a representation of the world who wants to be saved without acknowledging the judgment. And so the first thief essentially wants Christ, the Messiah, to prove himself. So he is placed in a position of, well, if you are who you say you are, then show me, prove to me. Now, why would the son of God have to prove himself to another man who does not even know himself? If he does not know himself, he does not know God. And if he does not know God, he is lost. It's as simply as that. Because until you know God and God is just a title, don't get lost into these titles. It's just a title for an energy. Until you can tap into that energy and that archetype, until you can get access to your Godhead, you remain trapped in your lower desires, lower primal desires. This goes along with the whole ketchup and mustard theory of how all the fast food restaurants, logos, and labels is all based on red and yellow, which correlates to essentially your root and your solar plexus chakra, your lower energy centers, your lower primal centers, your chakra, your sacral, all of these energy centers that are essentially responsible for providing some level of safety, some level of comfort, your root. Are you secure in your environment? 
Most people are not secure in their environment, therefore they have root problems, root chakra problems, and they manifest as different illnesses. That is indications of what is going on. Illnesses is our body telling us what we are neglecting, what we are not seeing, what we are failing to see, what we are choosing not to see, what we are choosing not to do anything about, what we are choosing not to balance. That's what our body does because our body is the most advanced piece of hardware on this planet. So going back to the first thief, he wanted something for nothing. That type of mentality does not work. Now, the second thief, the second thief represents the people who are willing to essentially account for their sins in this life so that they don't have to carry them on for the rest of eternity. However, they don't want anything beyond that. They don't want to teach people. They don't want to convert help. They just want to own up to what they did, their sins, and that's it. And you have these types of individuals in the world. However, again, understand both thieves were still condemned to death. So no matter what they said, they were both condemned to death. However, the second thief received essentially a pardon from Christ telling him that because you have acknowledged the judgment, you will be freed from your indwelling sin. And so the third man, which would be seen as Jesus, represents, again, the individuals who take up their own cross daily. These are the individuals who take up their own cause and who fight for what they believe in and who are willing to die for what they believe in. These are the type of individuals, the third man, again, these are the evangelists that are going to preach about whatever cause it is, whatever cause they so passionately believe in. These are the very individuals who are going to go out and push that cause forward, the Jesus archetype. So when you understand these archetypes and when you become Christ consciousness, you understand it's not a matter of being Christ, but rather being Christ-like which would essentially create like is a modifier. And it modifies the statement in a way that it gives you some flexibility because everything goes back to moderation. You don't want to be fully in that Christ energy because if you do, you are going to be persecuted for that very cause because you went too far into that energy. That's what the story is telling you. Why do you think the story exists? Do you think it would be as much of an impact if Jesus died on a, a boating accident or something trivial? Do you think that would have the same impact as being persecuted on a cross, on a hill? I know people have heard the expression dying on a hill. Oh, you're not going to die on that hill, are you? These expressions, all these things are derivative of the stories that have already been told. And the reason these stories are being told present day is because they are warnings. They are indications of if you follow this path, this is where you're going to end up. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. This is where you'll end up if you continue to follow this archetype. This is why we create archetypes. This is why we create titles is so that we, if I essentially look up to another entity, another archetype, I can look at that energy, look at that archetype's position, and I can essentially try to reverse engineer the steps it took to get to that realm in reality. And by doing so, not only do I see that it's possible to get to that realm in reality, but I know that 
there can be a way other than the way that was originally created because there's a million ways to do something always. It's just, again, a matter of perspective. If you're seeing things in one angle, one degree, there's still 359 other degrees. And so you're leaving so much on the table when you're not tapped in and aware to your biases, to your weaknesses, and to your deficiencies on a software side. Because while we may have hardware deficiencies, disabilities, everybody has the potential to craft their own software, their own unique belief system that works and allows them to be in a state of contentness, a state of peace. Everything is about peace to me. If you do not have peace, if there is some level of confusion internally, that just means there's work to be done and questions to be asked. Because when you ask yourself questions such as, what do I truly value? What brings me value? What makes me feel valued? And when you double down and see your relation to the things you value versus your current reality, you might be surprised to find that most of us are not aligned with what we value. We say we value our time, yet we spend 80 hours working. We say we value money, yet we spend it foolishly and gamble it away. These are the contradictions that keep us in never ending loops because we fail to acknowledge our deficiencies. And it's not hard to understand your deficiencies. You just have to be honest with yourself. So when we talk about the bottom left hand portion of this painting, there is a rectangle seemingly with a cross going or rather a horizontal line and then you got a vertical line straight down the middle so splitting it into four and then you have another similar x or cross and that is splitting it into eight sides and i thought this was interesting at first because my first thought was oh it's a pyramid top down but I didn't know personally of any pyramids that had eight sides until I did a little bit of research and found that there is only one pyramid in the world with eight sides, and that is the Great Pyramid of Giza. Now, the Great Pyramid of Giza has eight sides because uh, each of the slides are slightly concave. And this is something that wasn't, it's pretty much nearly invincible from the ground level. However, from a top-down perspective, a bird's-eye view, it was discovered that it didn't have four sides and it actually had eight. And so it took a pilot, a British Air Force pilot, flying over and taking pictures to then realize, oh, this has a whole nother dimension that we have not been able to see from our current perspective. Now, I want you to think about that same concept. There are things that we currently can't see at the ground level, hence why you have to take a higher perspective. Because if you cannot take a higher perspective, if you do not have the ability to look at a situation top down, you're missing information critical information that can be used in the solving of your problem. Because we all have problems. Some of us have more difficulty than others solving our own problems. Some of us need more help than others solving our own problems. And it just depends on from where we start from, our baseline. If our baseline is negative 5,000 and we run through that negative 5,000 and get to zero, that's a big accomplishment. And you have to give yourself compassion for getting to zero from negative 5,000. Otherwise, you will begin to resent yourself because everybody loves recognition. Regardless on if they say they do or not, everybody likes to be seen 
because when you are seen, you feel acknowledged, and when you feel acknowledged, you feel present. You feel anchored to this reality. You feel part of this reality. However, when you're not seen, you don't feel like you're part of this reality. You feel like a ghost, somebody in the shadows, somebody who is invincible. But again, this is a perception thing. If you are ashamed to shine your internal light because of perception or fear of judgment, you're scared to speak your mind, you're doing a disservice to yourself and you're doing a disservice to the world. Because similar to Basquiat, had he not expressed his internal reality via this art, I would not be sitting here today expressing my opinion on his interpretation of life. And this is a sequence of events, again, talking about that sequence that it's undeniable. It's an octave. And when you understand life is a series of octave, it's the same seven notes. Now, that eighth note is the tonic. That is the note of conclusion. That is the note all nature craves because that essentially gives resolve to the tension that was built up in the chords. If we understand the universe is a series of strings, chords, vibrating, resonance, if you understand resonance, you would know that two guitars tuned to the same frequency. If you pluck the string on one side of the room and the other guitar is on the other side of the room, it's going to resonate. Why? Because they're tuned into the same frequency. When you're tuned into the same frequency, it's effortless. It's effortless to exist within the realm of reality. But when you are tuned to a higher frequency and you're in a low frequency environment, it's chaotic. You want to get out. You want to move past that environment. You want to move through that environment as quickly as possible with as minimal effort as possible, conserving your energy, conserving your fuel, because you need to make it through that event. However, when you're in a pleasant environment, when you're in something that's comforting, everything can slow down. You can relax. You're not tensed up. You're not stressed. And this is the key to being able to unlock the modalities of your power. The elimination of the stress and the elimination of the stress comes from the detachment to the material reality. Your attachment to this material reality is what brings you suffering. Your attachment to this character, to this avatar, to this life that you believe is yours, which in reality is not. We are existing and stealing moments and claiming them as our own, as our own under our individual existence, accumulating moments and pockets of time that we hold to be valuable, but they don't belong to us because you are not this character. You are not the character you are playing currently. And if you think about the word character, you have to care to be that actor. Do you care to be the actor you are currently being? Because we are all acting. We're playing out roles. What is your role in this cosmic dance? Because if you are an artist and you are not sharing your art out of fear, out of perception, out of judgment, out of conditioning, that is you doing yourself a disservice and doing the world a disservice because the world deserves to hear your individual expression because there's a reason you were created. There's a reason you exist here now in this moment. That is to understand that you are the miracle. The fact that you're here is the miracle. You did not come to this reality to slave and to work unless it was meaningful. That is the biggest difference 
the meaningful work. When you're not doing the meaningful work, you're stuck into a loop of somebody else's design, again, being a battery pack for somebody else's dream. So somebody else who has recognized their inner power is now directing you, who is not aware of their inner power, and they are utilizing your resources to accomplish what they need. And that's not something to get angry about. It's something to understand you can do the exact same thing. And because you can do the exact same thing, there's no excuse if you are currently unhappy, if you're currently not getting the results you want out of life. So the significance with this pyramid of Giza is that the latitude, which happens to correspond to 29.979, Two four five eight degrees north. Coincidentally, which I don't believe is a coincidence in context because the universe doesn't have coincidences, the formula for the or speed of light is equal to 299, 792, 458 meters squared. So we're talking about the speed of light being pretty much exactly directly correlated to this pyramid, the only pyramid in the world that has eight sides. Again, when we're talking about cones, when we're talking about volume, when we're talking about sides, dimension, all these things are based upon different modalities of operation. So if you think about a crystal, they say the more faces a crystal has, the more data it can store. So a rough crystal with many jagged faces is going to be able to store more information than a smooth, polished crystal that has all its, all its imperfections removed. So again, understand this same concept, but apply it to a schooling system where the present schooling system is nothing more than a design to eliminate all individuality and to replace individuality with a belief system of being part of a team. The problem is, is that this team puts you into a competition because there are other teams. And if you do not wish to compete, if you do not know you're competing, you're going to continuously lose, not understanding that you are playing the game. If you are ignorant of the fact that there is currently a spiritual war going on, you may become a casualty of this spiritual war simply because you fail to acknowledge your environment, and the conditions which brought about your environment. Anybody can look around present day and see that times are changing. That's not, that's not something that is so profound. What is profound is how times are changing. People are being forced to reckon with themselves, to reckon with the haunting memories of their past that they have failed to let go all this time, there is no longer room to carry that level of density into the next dimension, into the next level of evolution. Therefore, those who cannot detach remain stuck to the old reality and will be destroyed with it. The Amorite, again, is a generic title, and it comes from the Sumerian word Martu, and Martu essentially refers to the population west of Sumer near Babylon, and the Amorites essentially was seen as the giant's clan. 
And so when we talk about the Giants clan, there is a... Let me go through from my notes here. Okay, so we're talking about punishment of the Giants. And so punishment of the Giants clan as seen was going to be an ongoing process um, as shown in Deuteronomy chapter 2. Now, what I believe the Amorite portion is speaking to essentially is God's timing. Because when we refer back to Babylon in biblical times, Babylon was a source of corruption evil and it was something that had to be dealt with in accordance to God's time and this is the same thing with the Amorites the Giants clans the giant clansmen so this is something that is going to be dealt with according to God's time God's timing is perfect now when we understand again these are just titles don't get lost into the title if you get too much into that, again, that's getting too much into a modality, and you do not want to be too much into any modality. Everything is moderation. Just remember that. Moderation, you can do anything you want in, in this rea realm and reality, as long as it's in moderation. The second you start get deviating past and going excess, that's when you start to suffer the, ra the ramifications of excess. And so... When we hop over, let's hop over to Freemasonry for a second, and let's talk about the three pillars. I think this is important to understand because you have essentially the pillars of Solomon's temple, right? And so if you think about the word or the title Solomon, right, you've got soul, on, and on. Each of those three parts all relate to son, soul, on, and on. Now, when we talk about the three pillars of Freemasonry, now you've got the left, which would represent the severity or the feminine. And then you've got the middle, which would represent the enlightenment or androgynous. And then you have the right, which would represent the mercy or the male. Now, you can see this concept represented by the Tarot death card, where the sun is rising between two towers or pillars. You can also see this symbol this symbology in Da Vinci's Last Supper. The back wall with two windows can be viewed as the three towers or two pillars. So on the right is the phallic or the masculine. On the left is a very effeminate John representing the feminine and the son or Jesus is in the middle. Again, understand the significance of symbols. Your subconscious mind is programmed, again, through trauma, repetition, and symbols. So when you understand this, you can't change anything until you address the root subconscious programming that created the program that you are trying to change. Until you address the root core programming that instructed that program of depression to run, that program of anxiety to run. All these are programs that you're choosing to run on your operating system. Why are you choosing to run depression on your operating system when you know it doesn't make you feel good? Why are you choosing to run the program anxiety on your system when you know it doesn't make you feel good? All these things are questions you have to ask yourself because until you ask yourself these questions, you will be in the dark about this. And again, when you are in the dark about something, when you can't see, you don't have the ability to do anything. Humans only act when they are inspired. We act off inspired change. So when we are inspired, we change. When we're not inspired, we do not change because there is no inspiration. There is no fuel in order to get to a different realm and reality. So while there may be a desire, the actual reality is we don't have the resources to fulfill that desire. 
we don't have the energetic fuel in our esoteric spaceships to make it to that point in space that we ultimately want to be at. So we settle for where we are. This is something that plagues most people, the complacency. And when you think about, for instance, the crown, right? You've got the crown and the crown is something that is pretty prominent in Basquiat's work. And the crown can be seen as so many different, again, so many different implications and applications. However, when we talk about the Hebrew Kabbalistic tree of life, you have got, let me find my notes here again. Okay. You, the Hebrew Kabbalistic tree of life contains 33 permutations of consciousness. You got 22 paths, 10 that are known and drawn, and 11 that are left hidden and unknown. So again, there's 10 known and 11 unknown. So there is more unknown than known on the tree of life. And this is a representation of our spinal column. So in the dictionary, one definition of atlas is the anatomical term for the first cervical vertebrae, which supports the head. This means that the 33rd vertebrae from the bottom, as the serpent travels, the very vertebrae which supports our heads slash minds is actually called atlas. So atlas, so the atlas vertebrae holds up the world, AKA our mind. Atlas has seven daughters, which equates to the seven chakras. Atlas's seven daughters guard the tree of life, the spinal column and its golden apples of immortality. Now, the golden apple of immortality is interesting because I'm not sure essentially what that could be. It could be multiple different things. When I think golden, of course I think golds, I think sun, I think heart, Leo energy, and then apples, I think of this earth, I think fruit, I think something that has to have roots because in order to grow, you have to have roots. So, and then when we talk about immortality, again, that's something that is infinite, a stone perhaps. There's the expression, diamonds are forever. The reason this expression was coined is because, again, this is something that is of this earth and has existed long before and then long after humans have inhabited it. So with that being said, I also think that this could be a correlation. The golden apple of immortality could be a correlation to the yellow diamond necklace. And the reason I say that is because you've got golden apple, right? So you got the yellow, the golden, so you got the soul, so you got the yellow. And then you've got diamond. Diamond is of this earth and it must be mined. And the same way a fruit must be harvested, it requires effort to be removed from the earth, to be separated from the earth. And so this could potentially, again, it's, it's speaking to obviously there is a spiritual implication and the golden apples of immortality can mean a maraud of different things. But in context of this image, this is what I'm thinking how it ties into it, is again that diamonds are forever. And when we're talking about this campaign, it's called about love. It's talking about the heart, the Leo constellation. And so with that being said, when we talk about value, okay, Value, when we're talking about logic, is based off earnings. But value for emotion is based off impact. And so the reason why market manipulation exists is because human manipulation exists. 
And so everything is a scam. However, focus is the key to unlocking the magic trick. If you aren't focused, you will miss the trick and be in awe. And awe can mean A-W-E or A-W-W, which would essentially be disappointment. You will be disappointed because you missed the trick. And the trick was right before your eyes. It happened right before your eyes. The illusion happened right before your eyes. And it is proof. However, again, if you're thinking about it from a perspective of lack, thinking that you cannot do the magic, that you cannot be the magician, you have already been practiced witchcraft on, and you counted yourself out of the race before you even started, which is, again, part of the conditioning. If I can get you to beat yourself down, I don't even have to beat you anymore. I don't have to do anything but put you in a room alone with yourself and you'll go crazy. I win. I win. There's no combating that. If you can't even be in a room alone with yourself, I win. If I created the conditions to where you can't even be alone with yourself in a room for more than five minutes, I win. So how many of you are letting other individuals win? How many of you are learning, not losing, but learning that you need to choose yourself first? Everything about this painting speaks to, again, chaos to the uninitiated eye, which is how you should appear to most people chaos to a person that does not know you but to somebody that knows you they would understand the methodical nature in trusting the universe to unfold exactly how it needs to that's a different level of trust and when you tap into that level of consciousness you no longer become confused by anything in this reality because you understand everything is an extension of another universe. So it's just a perspective. This painting is a perspective of another individual expression of God. The fact that I can understand it is because I am tapped into the same frequency. I attune myself to the exact same frequency so that I am able to receive. Because again, similar to our cones in our eyes, our receptors, they must receive. They must take in light. Everything around you receives the full spectrum of light. However, it comes down to the reflected wavelengths and the length of the reflected wavelengths. So when you look at a banana, a banana is actually receiving a full spectrum of light. However, the wavelengths that are 570 to 585, which would be considered yellow, that is what's being reflected. And that's what is being perceived as the color yellow. You're perceiving different wavelengths, short, medium, and long. So if this is how you are perceiving color through cones, you would then understand the significance of the cone and how it has been taken and warped into something that is negative. The original, or rather the origin of the whole dunce cap comes from Duns Scotus, which essentially was an intellect who believed that similar to wizards, when you wore a cone, the information was funneled through the point into the head of the wearer. So it was considered a thinking cap. So intellects and scholars would put on their thinking cap in order to stimulate thought. However, it became utilized as a form of punishment and became associated with being dumb. The opposite, up is down. Again, 
everything in this reality is backwards. Because if I can get you to believe you are in the correct orientation and in reality you're flipped upside down, I win. There are multiple ways for me to win if I am in power, if I am in charge, if I am elite and I possess knowledge of thousands of years of human conditioning, human behavior, human psychology, right at my fingertips, I win because I understand how to manipulate and utilize your energy better than you know how to use your yeah, better than you know how to use it yourself. And if I know how to utilize your technology better than you, don't you think I'm going to get more done? If I know how to utilize a program better than you, don't you think that I'm going to be more efficient in completing my tasks? Again, knowledge is the key. Speed of light, speed of information. There are two types of information, public and private. There are certain types of information that have been compartmentalized. The reason it has been compartmentalized is because there is a belief that information holds power. And this belief is true because you don't know what you don't know. However, what you don't know can affect you in ways you do know because you see the results of your lack of information expressed through your environment, your choices, your relationships. Everything about you is reflected through your choices. Your choices is what makes up your life. The things you choose to wear, the things you choose to say, the things you choose to pay attention to, all of this collectively makes up you as an individual existence or an individual expression of God, the universe. So if you have unlimited potential, however, a limited amount of energy, as we talked about on a day-to-day -day basis, you have to understand, you have to, mod you have to moderate and modulate that energy so that you have enough for the things that you want to do and the things that truly make you happy. Because until you put yourself into that realm and reality where the things you want are a possibility, again, you're not going to be inspired to go get those things, to go make them yours, because everything in this reality is yours. This art is yours. This, these symbols are yours. When you take ownership of it, you understand it's not something foreign. It's not something outside of you. It's something that you have to tap into and remember because there's no such thing as new discovery. It's remembering. It's tapping back into the gnosis element of our being and knowing truth because of its, the way it resonates, because of its frequency. You know when something is true. You know when somebody is off. You know when something isn't right because of your intuition. However, there has been a active attempt to stifle your intuition, to keep you in a place that lacks creativity and lacks imagination. Because imagination is magic. Imagination is powerful. It is the most powerful tool in the universe. If you strengthen your ability to imagine, you strengthen your ability to create endless solutions. Nothing becomes outside of your realm and reality. Everything is a possibility. And you can only get to that point when you accept that you are all that you are, everything and nothing, all encompassing and nothing, all at once, all at the same time, beautiful and ugly, good and bad, Satan and Christ, all at once, 
However, if you're into one modality too much, if you're into the Christ modality too much, you get persecuted. If you're into the devil modality too much, you fall from heaven. It's a balance. You got to walk that line with moderation. That's it. There's nothing else to this life but to moderate yourself. If you moderate yourself, your environment, again, will be a reflection of your choices and your smart, educated choices on yourself because you know thyself, you know your energy, you know how certain things make you feel, and you don't choose things that are destructive towards your feeling, towards your mental development, towards your mental health. When you no longer choose to destroy yourself, when you choose to start building yourself up, then you become the true developer. Then you can develop solutions beyond what's available because you are creating a tailor-made solution for your life. Nobody can write software better than you because you understand the requirements. You understand what it's going to take in order to be a sufficient product. You understand that. You know what it takes. But fear will keep us from doing, from starting. However, the perception keeps us from expressing. Fear keeps us from starting where perception, perception of what others may think keeps us from expressing. And you must express yourself. You must speak your truth because it exists for a reason. This art, again, is a reflection of you. It is a reflection of the times we are currently in. There is no chance that this came out just now at this point in time. It's been in private collections up until now. Why? Because, again, everything is a sequence. It is time for you to see this image and to understand the symbology behind it, to understand that light information, the speed of information, is available. However, a level of discernment must be present because there is so much information that there is also false information amidst the truth. And if you get lost into any of these modalities, any of these ideologies, anything outside of yourself, you're going to take a longer journey coming back to self. Because you can go away from yourself all you want. You can distance away from yourself all you want. But at the end of the day, you got to come back to center. You are the center point in this universe. You are the center point in this reality. Everything is relative to you, relative to your perspective, your positioning. And so if everything is relative to you, you have to be the one who is allowing yourself the rest, the compassion, the support. Everything that you are not receiving from your environment, you have to be the one to give to yourself. And that is something you have to accept and something you have to take full accountability for. If you are not receiving a type of energy in your life, it is not because of anyone else around you or anything else around you. It's because you have not chosen to give that to yourself yet. And you're learning how to give that to yourself. You have to respect and honor your processes always because while you want to be at Z, you still have to go through the alphabet. You still got to go through A, B, C, D, all of that before you get to the letter Z. So don't beat yourself up for not being there because you will get there. It's a sequence. You just have to follow the sequence. Trust the sequence. When you trust the sequence, nothing is confusing. Nothing is going to throw you off and make you feel that you aren't doing the right thing because you understand. It's all a sequence. I'm learning. Even when I'm failing, I'm learning. I love the fail. Bring me more failure because you know what? That feedback 
is going to be invaluable to me because that one tweak, that one little element that I add to the recipe could be the thing that makes it worldwide renowned, that makes it the indistinguishable, unique product separate from everything else in the world. Why? Because it's an extension of me and I am unique. I am one of one. Therefore, my perspective, my reality can only come from me. And when you understand that, there's power in being you. The problem is, is that we've been made to believe being you is not cool. No. You be you. You be you always. That's the key to this whole reality. You be you. When you be you, you understand everything. Nothing is confusing because you are all things. And as soon as you accept that, as soon as you can get on with releasing the attachment, that which brings suffering. Because what we attach ourselves to will eventually bring us suffering. There are some things in this reality that are worth suffering for. And that's up to you to decide. What are you willing to suffer for? What are you not willing to suffer for? What do you truly value in this life? And are you aligned with what you truly value? Because the speed of light, the speed of information is faster than ever. However, if you're not taking the time to slow it down and process it, you'll never understand. You'll never be able to get to where you want to go because you have to be able to follow a map. Your soul is the map. If you can't follow the map, again, you're choosing to be lost because you already have the map written on your heart. You don't need anything outside of you. You don't need any books. You don't need anything but to put yourself in nature and observe because you are the observer. Nothing more, nothing less. You are here to observe. Not everything requires or deserves a reaction. Be the observer. Be water. Take the shape of your environment that you are poured into, but do not become the cup. Still be water. So that when you are poured out of that cup into a different chalice, there is no resistance, no holding back, just going with the flow. That's the ultimate way to be. That's the ultimate way to live because that's how you find peace. In inner peace, I don't care what nobody say. That's the ultimate goal. Because if you don't got inner peace, if you at peace with the world, and at war with yourself, you got things backwards. You got to be at peace with yourself first before you can go to war with the world. Get your mind right before you try and help somebody else out. Don't be so quick to judge when you know that you got things that you need to work on as well. Because none of us are perfect. Some of us get to put on costumes and act in different roles, different realms, different realities, but none of us are perfect. Therefore, nobody has the right to say they are better than, less than. Everybody has the same opportunity to evolve if you can see past the conditioning the default operating system, the code that was placed into you through your environment from as early as you can remember. If you can move past the conditioning, you can create the life that you desire and you can understand that 
all of these modalities, all of this energy is here to be manipulated by you. It is here so that you can turn it into something new. Something from nothing. That is the goal in this realm and reality. To create from a state of peace. Because when we create from a state of chaos, it is reflected in our lives. It is reflected in our work, in our choices, in our words. And it affects our environment. How do you think it feels to consistently be in a state of chaos? Don't you think at some point chaos is going to seek the other modality of peace? And at the same time, don't you think peace is going to seek chaos at some point? It's a balance. Until you learn the moderation, until you learn to moderate yourself on a spiritual level, not just a physical level, but on a spiritual level, you will suffer the excess and that which comes with excess. So this has been a spiritual decode of equals pi. I am Cursed Prince. Till the next time, peace.